Mr. Chairman, everyone is in from the waiting room. Thank you, Monty. I appreciate that. Um, good evening, everybody, and welcome to tonight's Board of Selectmen meeting, March 29, 2022. The time is now 6.03 p.m. Having a quorum present, we will start the meeting. Um, just want to start off one more time. We actually were just talking about it a bit. Uh, and now that he's here, extend our condolences to uh, Selectman Murphy uh, on the loss of his brother. It was uh, It's tragic. And, and as I just said to Paul, uh, no mother should outlive any of her children. And uh, unfortunately, Kay has is, uh, is, is done that to two of them. But all our condolences, Paul, you know, it's from the heart. Great. I, I do. Thank there you, Mr. Go. Chairman. And thank you uh, to all the members of the Board of Selectmen. You're very welcome. Okay. With that said, let's go right and to Mitch. public comment. And Mitch, that's right. Let's go right to public comment. Uh, if you have a comment, you'd like to say anything, please raise your hand, use the hand raise function, and we will recognize you and you may speak. Any takers, Monty? Yes, sir. Toby, you've been unmuted. Name and record for the name and address for the record. Thank you, Toby Arsenian, 95 Granite Street. Uh, I see you have on your agenda tonight. Uh, the parking for the restaurants uh, and the tables and all that go with it. Uh, I happened to see an article in the Globe uh, this past week uh, saying that in the North End where they've done the like, uh, that they're charging each of the restaurants $7,500 uh, on top of which they're charging them for the what they lose on the revenue of the parking spaces. I would say that the $7,500 is uh, grasping and unnecessary, but I don't think it's proper that you are giving away a public asset, the money um, that we lose, $20,000 was the figure, uh, when the town is always short of cash. And the money that goes into the parking fund is the money that pays, among other things, for police cruisers. Uh, there are any number of other worthy uses for it. And if you're giving away the spaces at all, we should be recompensed every penny that we lose on the parking revenue. I think there's a real question whether you should be giving away the spaces under any circumstances. Uh, it's putting the interest, the financial interest and in convenience of the restaurants ahead of the interest and safety of the residents who are put off the sidewalks and into the street. Yes, there are barriers and they look like hell. And there's also the question of the DPW's time to get the materials for the barriers up there. So I hope you'll consider that. And you've also got on your agenda your review of the warrant articles with the moderator. And I'd remind you of my perennial concern about uh, the possibility of adding to the sums in warrant articles. And perhaps you would ask the moderator what his ruling is going to be on that, whether citizens can add to uh, line items, and if so, under what circumstances. We all ought to start on the same page uh, with the same rule book, clear for all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Toby, much appreciated. Sarah will be presenting for uh, the parking, and there is some, um, some uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Sorry, some money coming back to us on that, but I'll let, I won't steal Sarah's thunder on this one and let her take that when the time comes. Um, is there anybody else for public comment? Hearing none, we will move on to the town meeting review. And I'm on an iPad tonight, so I'm a little bit behind on seeing who's here. Is Bob on here? He is. Yes. He is. All right. Can we unmute Bob, please, uh, Monty? Bob, you've been unmuted. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Hi, Bob. Hey, man. Yeah. Nice to see that you're uh, unmuted, Bob. That's, it. <laughs> That's how I live my life. <laughs> right? I was waiting. So his, his wife wants the button at home so he, she can hit the button on the mute oh, button. She has it, believe me. <laughs> yeah, that's it. All right. So, Bob, regale us with uh, all the, the everything going on at town meeting. How's that this week? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I um, was just looking to pull up the warrant, um, but I am feeling um, more confident that uh, this won't be an extraordinarily long meeting now that we have removed the zoning articles from it. And um, I think 
you know, there are several, of course, everything's important, but there are several big ticket items. But the, the two that I uh, lose the most sleep over uh, are the Long Beach options uh, report uh, and the discussion about the DPW um, structure and uh, the need for more funds. No surprises there. Um, but the more I think about it, I don't think those are going to necessarily take an extraordinary uh, an extraordinarily um, long time to discuss. Uh, the Long Beach Options Committee, of course, it's a report where we accept it as we, we accept all of the reports, and then it's going to be presented. And what I'm going to try to steer the discussion towards is for people to ask questions. It's a very complex issue. We will have town council there ready to answer questions. We'll have the committee there ready to uh, discuss their their various um, options. And I'm hopeful that people, you know, and we can limit this, um, aren't going to uh, just give us 300 sets of opinions as to what they will want to do. Um, I'm confident that uh, between now and when decisions are made, we will have adequate uh, forums for the, the selectmen to solicit the input of the constituents. And so um, it's, it's going to be important for people, of course, to discuss and to figure out this complex issue. But uh, um, I'm hoping we um, can limit the, the discussion and the time we spend on it. Same thing with the, with the DPW building. We've already Discuss that at length. Matter of fact, this tends to be a deja vu meeting. There are a lot of things on the warrant that have been discussed before, and one of which is the DPW building. And now uh, we're going to be talking about why it's more expensive and how everything that could possibly be jettisoned from it has been jettisoned from it. And um, it will, I'm sure, engender all sorts of discussion, but I don't anticipate that as being too tremendously long either. So I'm I'm confident that we'll be able to get this done in the course of a day. And that we will leave, my prediction is that we will leave and there will still be plenty of light and plenty of time for uh, Selectman Murphy to play nine nine holes of golf if he wants to. There you go. Right hand so on that it. one. And... <laughs> it takes him a very long time to play nine holes of golf, though. Yeah. Yeah. Not a good, not a good look there for me. Go. Well, that's great. Bob, did you want to take a minute? Uh, I, I, you were on, I believe, when Toby asked this question. Do you want to address that now, or did you want to do that at time? I mean, I think, I've, I, I, I think that, um, you know, as, as uh, everything else, everybody else, I think that I've, uh, I've evolved in my position on that. And I, you know, through discussion with, uh, with town council and the way our articles are written, I think that, um, uh, the town doesn't necessarily have to come up with a budget that is in balance. And there are bad things that happen if that doesn't occur. And I think that uh, people can propose items more or less than uh, you know what's been recommended. Um, the The hope is that people will be cognizant of uh, you know of what happens if we're not if we're not in balance. And um, you know, that's, I guess, without giving it a lot of uh, additional time and research this spring, I think that's um, kind of my general thoughts in that regard. Very good. Mitch Thank you, Bob. Up. I know Mitch looked up when I said that, so he may have some thoughts in that in that area. Well, we've got a balance by June 30th. Next. So as long as we balance by June 30th, that's the critical thing. Yeah. yeah. So how does that, so doesn't it, I thought it had to, I thought we had to present a balanced budget to the state. We have to have one to start the year. We have to have one to start. The year. So if it doesn't get balanced at town meeting, then what happens? Then we will be putting it back on your May 16th special meeting. Yeah. So I mean, it's Bob, a problem. It, need, it really that, needs to. I want to give that yeah, some no, I, 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 You know, as I said, I'm advising people that, that that's not a good thing. But if somebody, you know, if we have an article to buy a police cruiser and it's forty thousand dollars, and somebody says, "I want us to buy a forty-five thousand dollar police cruiser," then I think that's an appropriate thing to talk about. And I think, you know, earlier in my career, I said, "Well, then you have to show me where we're going to take five thousand dollars off, uh, you know, to balance that out." And and I don't think that's the requirement of town meeting, though it certainly is strong 
recommendation for the town that we would town council so uh, town council klein is uh is with us now as well good evening Aaron. good evening hey, Aaron. Aaron. how are you good good did you want hey, to did you want to see opine you? in on this Darren? he didn't hear the question <laughs> oh i'm sorry i thought i thought he was jumping on because he wanted to address it my apologies sure i'll just guess what the question no i'm kidding i i don't know what the question is the question is oh well, i'm not even going to be a wise guy on this one i'm going to i'm going to be nice and we'll move on so that's good um all right good well darren glad to have you with us um bob anything else you wanted to add or are you are you good not really. I mean, I think we, you know, again, on the deja vu theme, some of the the um, the one that pops to mind is uh, since I was just at the dentist today is uh, fluoride. We've talked about that several times. We will uh, talk about it again. I don't anticipate nor um, do I think that we will have a very long discussion in that arena. I don't know that any science has changed since the last couple of times that we've discussed this. Uh, you know, the the um, opinions of the voters may have changed. So of course, we're going to hear everybody out. But I don't think we need to have a tremendously long discussion in that regard. Very good. Very good. Mitch, did you want to add anything to this? Or uh, are you good? You're going to come up later on on this anyway. I think okay. we're, we're, we're ready. We're ready for it overall. And uh... You know, we'll be prepared to carry things out as uh, as we did, uh, uh, generally speaking, pre-pandemic. Uh, we'll have some safeguards in place for the meeting. We'll have um, some spacing of chairs. We will have all the windows open. So anybody coming who's planning to sit in the bleachers or along the edge, just be prepared. Uh, and we'll, we'll let people know this. We're going to do a, uh, e an email code red uh, probably tomorrow. And we'll let people know that. But the windows will be open. It'll be chilly. So they should plan uh, uh, accordingly for that. And we'll also have our air purifiers in place. And uh, as our COVID code red said yesterday, we will be handing out uh, COVID tests at, on, the, uh, on the way out of town meeting for folks. And also and, uh, uh, the cap is not going to be open. Is that correct, Mitch? We are not going to open the, the cap area. We will not be selling um, food in, in the sense that we have before, but the moderator has some uh, approvals he's given to some bake sale. Yeah. Uh, oh, yep. Yeah, there's a, there's a, one of my kids is in band raising money for an Italy trip because I got an email asking me to bake for it, <laughs> yeah. which was ironic. So awesome. It's, it's always good Wait, to give a little Band-Aid. It's I, not ironic. You know. <laughs> uh, and, and also, uh, Mitch, when you send out your code red, I mean, the older I get, the more I think um, uh, casual helps meetings uh, move along. So other than Darren Klein, who will wear his suit and tie, I'm hopeful that people will dress um, according to the weather, since the windows will be open, and uh, you know that the the dress will be um, casual. Will be invited. Dar Darren does clean up well, so we appreciate yeah. that, Darren. I I usually have to go over to Selectman Murphy's house and help him pick out an outfit, but for the rest of you, uh, I think you'll be okay. Bob, he's got the gar animals. You put the zebra with the zebra, he's all set. Don't worry, but we took care of him. Oh, good. Uh, yeah. Saturday, I'm just looking at the weather, and it looks like 34 degrees with potentially a high of 50. Uh, Going to be windy is what I'm showing. So hopefully we get some cooperation from Mother Nature. Absolutely. Sarah, you were going to say? Yeah, quick comment. Bob, just on the Long Beach, just a heads up for the Long Beach Options Committee report, um, several like Long Beach residents have reached out to me, some anonymously, some not. And I think the past, you know, eight months or so, some people have felt bullied kind of on social media and they've made to be, to feel really, made to feel really uncomfortable. So just keep that in mind. I don't know how many Long Beach residents will have at town meeting because the cottages um, don't open up until Friday, right? It's Friday the 1st. Um, it's first, you know, so I, I, my assumption is we will have some like we do at every town meeting. I know yeah. lots of residents of town of uh, Long Beach are res registered Rockport voters as well. But just know that, you know, I know that there are some people feeling uncomfortable and um, so to, you know, well, just monitor the comments. Yeah, no, I, I mean, 
my mantra is always uh, uh, civility. I mean, this isn't the Academy Awards. <laughs> and uh, so we'll be polite to one another. And um, and if not, uh, the, gendar the gendarme will come and visit you, as we've had happen in the past. And I want to hear, um, you know, from everybody who um, wants to express themselves. I think it's a very, a very important uh, part of our democracy. So we want that and we don't want anybody to feel intimidated, whether they're a rookie and they haven't participated before or because of um, the, the bullying that can take place in social media. So please, you know, let, let your Long Beach friends and everybody else in town know that they will be invited and uh, they don't no, no prior experience is required. And I fully so, recognize, uh, Bob, that it, that's a tough line for you as the, the moderator of the meeting, uh, balancing uh, free speech and, and, and so forth. So uh, I, I know you do, do, will do a fine job, but uh, I do want to uh, point out that it's not an easy uh, thing to do. So thank you. Thank you for what you do, Bob. Well, I'm well compensated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? A point was just brought up and I... I I was remiss because I had it on on my opening remarks on this and I didn't mention it. Uh, a big congratulations to the people involved in the filming of CODA and on their awards. Um, you know, that was just absolutely amazing. I have a, a very dear and personal friend, Elena Lee, who um, has two deaf parents and was involved in and the behind the scenes stuff. And, and she's a sign language expert and interpreter and all that stuff. But to see Shill and Lou and, and, and Pratties and all our local hangouts and all the fun stuff. Sitting right now. It was, just, it was so proud. What's that? Where you're sitting right now, uh, wasn't the, the part of the, yeah, the, your exact seat. That, yep. that was part yeah, of the right. uh, trial or something. You know, it's funny. I, we, we were watching, I was watching the movie with my wife a couple, about a week ago. And we're watching it, and this came on. You're exactly right. And I said, "Wait a minute, he's in my seat. Get out." I didn't like that. So, yeah, that was good. But congratulations to them. It was fantastic. What a, what a great achievement. Yeah. Um, so that's good. Okay, Bob. Thank you so much. Looking forward to uh, seeing you. You won't have the benefit of the cows to help you this time because we're indoors. Uh, but we're going to have a great town meeting. It's going to be spirited, and they're going to have great involvement. So thank you for what you do. Yeah, and well, I kind of milked that joke, so we're done with that, really. <laughs> um, Bob, I did do Jesus. some research, and uh, the moderator does not have the authority to extend April Fool's Day to April 2nd. Uh, <laughs> so. oh, Darn it. <laughs> well, I look forward to nicely, seeing all of nicely you. Nicely done, Counselor. Very done. <laughs> Very well done. I look forward to seeing all of you um, on on Saturday, and oh. uh, I hope we have a huge turnout. And uh, um, these are always um, exciting and learning experiences. Thanks, Bob. You're welcome. Okay, so that's great. Uh, okay, moving right along, let's go on to item D, uh, the consent agenda. We do have some minutes. Uh, 36 Old County Road. Those are from March 8th. 36 Old County Road lease to reflect the transfer of ownership of the trust, transient vendor license for gallery number 11A Main Street, appointment of Thatcher Island, Thatcher and Straits with Island Keepers for 2022, uh, accept the resignation of David McKinnon from the Conservation Commission. Uh, does anybody wish to hold an item? Hearing none, is there a motion? I have a motion, Mr. Chair. I move that the board approve all non-held items on the consent agenda. Second. Motions moved and seconded. For the discussion, hearing none, roll call vote. Selectman Brackett? Aye. Selectwoman Wilkinson? Aye. Selectman Murphy? Aye. Selectman uh, Lilia? Aye. Very good. Motion, Selectman Campbell votes aye. Motion carries 5 0. Uh, moving on, and I, I may be interrupted on this. If I do, my iPad is at 3%. I apologize. I may have to seek an alternative arrangement. So if, if it does die, Ross will take over the meeting and then I'll rejoin uh, when I can. I might have to come up to your office, Mitch. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, okay, so moving on to the action list, nomination of animal inspectors. Mitch, did you wanna speak on this first and then we'll have a motion and a vote? Uh, certainly, Mr. Chair, thank you. So um, you have uh, two of our previous nominations in front of you. Uh, Allie Thompson, who has been the primary the last several years, unfortunately, is moving out of the area. 
so she's not able to continue with us. However, uh, Diane Corliss, who is also our animal control officer, is able to continue and she will move into the primary spot and Leslie Whalen will remain on as uh, her backup. So we have um, uh, a primary and a backup in place. Diane um, is well suited for the position. Uh, she also serves as the animal inspector in Gloucester and in Essex, uh, in addition to her ACO role here. Um, so I'd recommend um, your approval of the nominations for both of these. We will then transmit this to the state. Uh, they carry out the final appointment and it takes effect May 1st. Excellent, excellent. Uh, is there any further discussion? Oh, well, let's get the motion first. Is there a motion? Sure, Mr. Chair. I move that the Board of Selectmen nominate Diane Corliss as Rockport's Animal Inspector and Leslie Whalen as the alternate Animal Inspector for 2022. I'll second that. Motions made and seconded. Uh, further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Selectman Brackett. Aye. Selectwoman Wilkinson. Aye. Uh, Selectman Murphy. Aye. <clears throat> Selectman Lilia. Aye. Selectman Campbell votes aye. Motion carries 5-0. Moving on, the approval of use of back beach and bandstand for walk Massachusetts kickoff. And I believe we have Diane and Carolyn here, correct? Diane, did you want to speak on this? Yes. Okay, you're okay. unmuted, Diane. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, for those of you that don't know, um, Cal is here as well, our new... Um, project uh, specialist here for the uh, Council on Aging. She's doing a fantastic job. In fact, um, Carolyn wrote the grant uh, for this event um, from, from Mass Council on Aging. So, and we received the grant for $500 to be a kickoff site, a regional kickoff site um, for, for the walking event. So, um, what we're asking for is a permit um, to use the bandstand area, um, the park part, uh, so we can put some tables there and uh, start our event there. And we will have um, walking uh, trails along, along the um, shore. And also um, some of the trails will we'll do like a mile, half a mile for, for people who can do certain um, walks, you know, if people uh, feel they can go further uh, to um, the end of Bearskin Nat, you know, we'll have that walk as well. Um, so we, that's what we thought. And we, we also would like to, you know, have some go into um, Millbrook Meadow as well for, for walking, you know, we just thought it would be a beautiful spot to, um, feature Rockport as a, a walking event kickoff. In uh, Mass Council on Aging across the state, um, they do this all year long, um, the walking events. So uh, the seniors keep track. And this year, also uh, children can keep track too. And that helps our Council on Aging, each Council on Aging, whoever has the most at the end of the year, the most mileage. Uh, wins wins a prize for Mass Council on Aging. So um, we're asking if we could use the park uh, to um, be the point to start our event. So. That's terrific. Uh, Diane, I just, I just want to say to you and to your staff and all the people who volunteered on there, thank you so much for what you do. The services you provide are invaluable to this town. I really mean that. Um, oh, you, you know, the emails that come out, the thing, the, just the, the way you keep everybody informed is just, is fantastic. And I really thank you so much for that. Oh, thank you. Thank you very, You're very much. welcome. Okay. Questions from the board? Oh. oh, sounds great. Sounds like a great plan. Yeah. Sounds wonderful. Thank, thank you. you. Oh. Well, welcome, Carolyn. Thank you. It's great to be here and you're all invited. Come join us. <laughs> Hoof it and, and earn some miles for your senior center. Great. That's great. Okay. Um, have we had the motion on this? I'm sorry. I don't recall. No, but no. I do have oh, a motion okay. for yes. you. Please. I would appreciate that. Okay. I move that the Board of Selectmen approve the use of Back Beach and Bandstand on May 4th at 9 a.m. for the regional kickoff of Walk, Massachusetts. Second. 
Motions made and seconded. Further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Selectman Brackett? Aye. Selectwoman Wilkinson? Aye. Selectman Murphy? Aye. Selectman Lilia? Aye. Selectman Campbell votes aye. Motion carries 5 0. Congratulations, Diane, and have a, I hope you have a tremendous event. Good for you, oh. Carolyn, you as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Yep, no problem. Okay, let's go on to uh, item number three, outdoor display for coastal glass blowing, 30 bear skin neck. Uh, is there a motion? There is, Mr. Chairman. I move that the selectmen approve the outdoor display uh, permit for coastal uh, glass blowing located at 30 bear skin neck for the 2022 season. I'll Is second there a second? Yes, Good. I'll second. made and second. Good, thank you. Do we have anybody here? I can't see, I apologize, I'm on an iPad, but is there anybody uh, here to speak on that and describe it at all? Uh, Not that I can say, Mr. Chair. Nope, okay. All right, good. Uh, does anybody have any comments, questions, concerns? Uh, assuming it's pretty standard, I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm a fan of the picture with just the, circle on it but you know as long as it's a standard sidewalk style or, um, sandwich board i'm assuming it's going to be fine yeah and i i too as long as uh, all the regulations are adhered to i have no issue yep agreed sarah i'm sorry what did you say agreed good okay all right good uh further discussion on this hearing none roll call vote selectman bracket aye uh, Selectman Wilkinson. Aye. Selectman Murphy. Aye. Selectman Lilia. Aye. Uh, Selectman Campbell votes aye. Motion carries 5-0. Item number four, consideration of outdoor dining for 2022. Is there a motion? Um, I don't think we have a motion yet. Do we, Mitch? You, you do don't. We? So I did just yeah, the presentation. Yeah. Okay, so we'll just turn it over and then we can make a we can make a motion on this once we discuss it and maybe tweak it a bit, correct? So the motion matches what we talk about. Okay, yeah. great. Sarah, why don't you go ahead and take it away? Sure. Um, I don't Mitch, I don't know if you have the document that I created. If you want to do a screen share, I can just go over it. Um, Don want me to just run down it really quick. So yeah, I think please. the proposal is um I think a few of us were at the EDC meeting a few weeks ago where they um, unanimously supported continuing outdoor dining. Um, so the plan would be the Board of Selectmen with support from EDC will continue the outdoor dining program for the 2022 season. Um, while we're no longer in a state of emergency and need the outdoor space to inst use instead of indoor, there have been numerous benefits to having increased outdoor dining areas in town and the feedback has been extremely positive. Um, there's a list of restaurants that I shared with the board that are currently eligible. And um, so the plan would be that we would follow the same processes and procedures that we've done the last two years, which is the eligible restaurants will receive an email from our office. The whole kind of program is run out of the Board of Selectmen's office. Um, those restaurants include uh, Fish Shack, Feather and Wedge, Hula Moon, Two Little Birds, Red Skiff. And then I've noted that um, Brackets was eligible last year, but they chose not to participate. And the Blue Lobster Grill did participate the last two years, but they're no longer operating. Um, and then the town administrator and police chief will do research and probably site visits to see if there are any other new restaurants that could be added this year. I know there are a couple of new spots. And then if they're, um, if they're found to be eligible, then they can add, they can add them to the list. Um, and one thing that's important to note is the sale of alcohol is subject to pending mass state legislation regarding outdoor dining. So basically the state legislature hasn't yet voted on um, expanding the sale of alcohol to outdoor dining areas yet. I, I think um, everyone it looks like is moving forward in anticipation of that happening. It just hasn't officially happened yet. So obviously um, until that happens, they just can't serve alcohol out there. And that includes um, BYOB or anything because they're already licensed establishments, but I'm, I would assume that it will all be cleared up. I would think within a few weeks. Mitch, is out your sense? 
that's my understanding as well. Yeah. Can, can I just jump in? Uh, I just have a quick question, Sarah, uh, regarding that. Uh, is this for uh, restaurant? What about restaurants that are already have uh, outdoor dining? Dining. No, this is only this is, for restaurants that don't that don't. That's um, our Okay. Space. Yeah. Okay. And this. Thank, is thanks for the clarification. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I should have said that to start with. This is also for restaurants that would need to use um, town-owned property for the outdoor Perfect. dining. Yep. Okay. So um, we always encourage restaurants that have their own space to use it, and I think we've been really supportive of that happening. Um, so I've made three suggested changes to the program. Um, first is at the suggestion of EDC from that I got out of their meetings. We would basically give restaurants three dates to choose from to start. And to start, I mean full approval. So they have to get their sign-offs from um, police, fire, health inspector. And then obviously our office with the plan, and this is all laid out in emails to them. But um, then once they're fully approved, the barricades would be delivered from the DPW. So I'm suggesting an April start, a May start, and a June start. So kind of rolling. So if someone doesn't want to start until June, they aren't forced to start in April. So they basically will have three, three chances to start. Um, and then one tweak that I'm suggesting after hearing the EDC's conversation about this uh, in our last year's program, we had a regulation that was failure to use the space. So basically, if you didn't use the space for within 14 days, um, the space could be taken back by the town. And we actually, I, I believe we only had one restaurant that we had an issue with. Um, I'm suggesting we change that to failure to use the space for seven consecutive days without prior approval of the Board of Selectmen may result in the immediate removal of the barricades because um, as we know, it's a significant investment that the town, that the DPW, and frankly, that other businesses are doing to obviously to, to help the economy in the downtown area, but it is a, at a cost to the town. And the last thing we want is spaces being wasted. So I think that unless you know you have a staffing, unless you have some kind of issue, basically if within a seven day period, you know, the, the, the spots can't sit for more than seven days, which seems reasonable weather-wise. And then the last, um, the last change I'm suggesting is that um, last year in 2020 and 2021, there was no fee to use the town space. Um, a lot of that was due to it being a state of emergency. And frankly, we were trying to create seating outdoors to keep people from indoors and, and indoors wasn't allowed. Um, I'm suggesting um, after doing a little bit of research, I know there's a lot of controversy going on in Boston. I'm suggesting a $500 fee per restaurant for the season. Um, if you look at, I think that basically, um, it, I, I, if you split it up, I kind of ran the math quickly. It ends up being paying between 10 and 15% of kind of the, the cost. And I know the costs aren't all tangible and you know the benefits pure, obviously outweigh the cost, but I do think that um, it's a benefit that not, not everyone's getting. So there, there needs to be a cost associated with it. And that seemed to me to be really fair, but obviously this is all up for discussion. So those were my kind of thoughts that I threw down. Did a great job, Sarah. A great presentation, very thoughtful, um, as always, as with everything that you do. So thank you for that. Um, let's let's open it up here. Thoughts, opinions, discussions, Paul. No, I I think I, I concur with uh, Don. Thank you, Sarah, for your uh, presentation. Uh, it does cost. Uh, uh, you know, we're losing uh, revenue from parking spaces. Uh, I hope, as I think uh, the chairman has mentioned numerous times, uh, that uh, you know, hopefully, this outdoor dining is here to stay. It's great, you know, it's wonderful, but it does come at a cost, and and so I think this is a good way to start. You know, the the, the five hundred dollars, and the, you know, e each year, uh, each board of selectmen uh, can uh, reevaluate. Maybe it has to go up, uh, and and so forth. But I, I think this is a good start, so uh, I, I'm in full support of it. What, what are the uh, recommended dates for these for the season? So you for the, for the fee. So what for each of covered? the specific start dates that are on here, we'll, we'll sort through what those exact dates will be once we have a meeting with our in, in, um, internal team, the police, fire, etc. So we'll put exact dates on it. 
Um, we're still just a little bit away from knowing exactly which day in April, May and June, we'd be able to say, okay, let's get started. Yeah, Ross, I was thinking April 15th to, it looked like a lot of communities are doing um, either October 31st, or we could do like December 1st. I don't, whatever people are comfortable with. Uh, I would ask that we stop it be probably when the meters stop for the um, shopping season. Um, I know there's been a lot of the retail have positive responses, but you know, from the same retailers, you also hear lack of parking. So uh, to me, I don't like the concept of taking up parking spots. So, I mean, I would like to see, you know, like a 250 a month. So when the restaurant chooses, they want to have restaurant uh, outdoor dining, they can pay a fee monthly to cover those costs for the parking spots. That's just how I look at it. Cause the, I mean, I hear a lot of complaints about, you know, cause sometimes restaurants don't open all day or all night. Sometimes restaurants are only open at the nighttime. So we're losing those parts spots during the day. So we're losing that revenue altogether. And then I hear it on my end from the retail shops, especially when, you know, in some, some instances, business owners of the restaurants were able to take advantage of the way the, um, barriers were set up. I don't think that will happen this year. But that's just how I look at it. I think, I mean, $500 is fair, but I just think a monthly fee would be more reasonable. So, you know, if, if the restaurant, they can easily manipulate the seven consecutive days. So this way it'll kind of keep them in line to pick a day to start that they want to commit to outdoor dining. And then when they want to be done and then the fee goes away. That's just how I look at it. So, you know, any other input from anyone else would be great. Um, I mean, um, well, uh, we're looking then, given Ross's suggestion, looking at a fee of approximately $1,500 a season uh, for the six months that they could possibly have outside dining. That's one aspect of it. The other is that if, in fact, you're going to say it's on a monthly basis, then you can't kick them out after six days. They have the month to work with. So they're, they're paying for the month. So um, just two bits of well, thoughts that I just had. Um, I'm fully in favor of it. I think it adds to everyone's business in town. I think it will add to everyone's business as time goes on. I think the whole concept of cafes in the street in Rockford or any town makes the town more appealing, as I believe I've said before. So I'm in full support of it. As far as the fees are concerned, that's something we can discuss further, but um, I support it. I'm gonna, I'll jump in here if I can. Um, I, I like Ross's idea of the monthly fee. I don't think if we do a monthly fee, it needs to be that 500. Because if you're looking at April, May, June, July, August, um, September, and potentially October, if you charged, and again, I'm just throwing this out for conversation. <clears throat> if you charge say 250 a month. Um, that's what I that's said, Mr. Chair. No. Oh, did you 250 a month? I'm sorry. Yeah, I, that's what I, I recommend. Apologize. Oh, 250 a month. Yeah, yeah. Well, there we go. We're on the same page on that. Um, which I don't think is is a bad fee to charge. You know, the the average parking spot after conversations uh, with Mitch is is about nine hundred dollars a month that each spot generates. <clears throat> it's about thirty dollars a day. Extrapolate out. <clears throat> Pardon me. So that's kind of what you're looking at. As far as the segmented part of it that that Herm just brought up. If you pay for a month and you know what the rules are and it's seven days and you don't use them, that's a chance you're going to take. That's not on the town. Um, so I would say that seven day rule should still apply. Um, $250 doesn't buy the cost of a spot. It buys the, the use of town land, which, you know, we need to have an overall plan for a lot of other things, uh, whether they be boardwalks or what have you. So I, I think the 250 is right. Uh, you pay for the month. If you don't use it for seven, that's one of the caveats of the quote unquote contract that you would have with, with uh, restaurant owners. And I don't think it's burdensome. I think it provides the extra benefit of the, all those extra seats. So there's a lot of revenue being generated. We're not looking to bleed anybody, but we still, the town still has to be compensated. Paul. Hey, thank you, Mr. Chairman. It, with, with all due respect to uh, Selectman Brackett, uh, he is a uh, he owns a restaurant uh, with his, with his family and so forth. Uh, I think we're opening ourselves up to some criticism 
uh, with uh, selectman back bracket voting on this. Well, I can let uh, you know that I, I chose not to have an outdoor dining because I didn't want to take up parking spots. That's I'm just saying, I think, I uh, and again, uh, not, not trying to be difficult with you, Ross, but I, I think that uh, you should be recusing yourself uh, it, and with this discussion, considering you're a restaurant person. Can I ask how uh, again, outdoor it, dining affects my business, though? Just, uh, I'm just. Well, you're you're still curious. a Yeah, I mean, we we take we go take this very seriously. We're recusing ourselves. I've seen other members of the board of selectmen recuse herself. And again, I'm not being critical. I just I think mm -hmm. I don't want us. You know, we make a decision, and then all of a sudden, you know, people are saying, "Well, one of the board of selectmen own owns a restaurant in town." So uh, I I just I wanted to. Uh, publicly say that. Thank you. Well, the, I, I and I understand that, Paul. I think that the that recusal is appropriate when um, somebody has a direct interest in something, a relative being paid or something. Ross has no direct interest in this. He's he's uh, though he's a business uh, owner. He's though a, business he's a business owner, owner and a restaurant. Right, but that, that but that honestly, to me, it, that doesn't matter because he doesn't have a stake in this. There's no. Sure There's no, well, he doesn't because he's not looking for outdoor dining. He's just voting as a member of the board but, of select. I'm but, in favor of outdoor dining to make that clear. But, but I just want the town to recoup some of the money they lose in parking. I, I'm, I'm feeling like we're skirting like a fine line. I mean, I, the choice is up to Ross, but I, frankly, I, it makes me uncomfortable that Ross, it, it, it is making me uncomfortable. I'm just going to put that out there. I mean, it's, okay. it's obviously up to Ross. It's just when Ross is discussing, there aren't even any other restaurant owners here. And when Ross, as a member of the Board of Selectmen, is discussing charging other restaurants a fee for something, that just seems like it could be a perceived conflict of interest to me. You, you brought up the fees in your draft, so I was just suggesting a different type of structure for the fee. But your nature of your... Uh... Your, your job, uh, the, what, what right, you no, I'm, I'm going to recuse myself. I'm going to mute myself. I, I get, no, Ross, no. and I'm not trying to be difficult, but I, for your own sake. Okay, let's 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 stay on focus here. This this is not about Ross's involvement. Ross said he would recuse, so you know Ross can. Ross, that's Ross's decision. I personally, uh, with no bias, don't see a conflict in this, especially because Ross and Sarah are both uh, liaison to the EDC. So, you know, I, knowing Ross, knowing there's no monetary involvement, there's no bias in this, I, I see no problem with Ross being involved in this vote, but I'll leave that up to Ross when it comes time. Um, so let's get back to what we're doing here. So we're, we're talking about the fee um, and we're talking about the time. So I, there's, it, besides, let's put that aside just for one second. Are there any other issues that anybody has any problems with besides the fee and the, and the timing of all this? Is everybody okay with that? And then we'll come right back to it. Herm, go ahead. Well, I, I would go back to this uh, six or seven days. I, I do think that's rather truncated. Having uh, two weeks of rain in June, uh, easily possible. Um, so. And that Herm, that's totally fine. And all they would need to do is email the board that that's the reason. Okay. In other words, it, so it, it does say it the way it's written it, because obviously we, weather and staffing are two issues. So it says um, without prior approval of the board of selectmen, and then it says may result in the e immediate removal. So it basically just gives us a way to remove the barricades if we determine it wasn't because of of weather or staffing, or they didn't have approval from us. Does that make sense? Yeah, it, it, it certainly does. It does. It does give them an easy out. I, I mean, it, it's sort of one six or one and a half dozen of another, um, because yeah. if they say that they have a staffing problem, how are we to, in a sense, verify that? Um, but anyway, yeah. that's OK. I'll, I'll live you with your uh, what one week, is it seven days? Seven days. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I, we can also make it a little bit longer. I just, um, you know, Maybe it's, it's days. complicated. EDC I don't looked at like determining how many days a week you had to be open, but that that's policing that is too complicated for our office. So it just seemed, I mean, honestly, I, I went back and forth between seven and 10. Okay. If people are more comfortable with 10. We could easily go with 10. We're, 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 we're stabbing in the dark here because there really isn't an absolute number. Um, so I let it be whatever you choose. I, I also support it. I, I look at it a bit differently. I don't think it's an easy out for the for the shop owners. I believe it's latitude for the board of selectmen 
um, and to do it judiciously and, and with thought to it. So I, I think it's kind of a double edge on this one. So you can look at it from either prism. Um, okay, so, uh, so I guess what the, the change with the seven days would stand unless somebody wants to make a motion to amend. Um, and then the, the fee to 250 per month, is that, do, am I hearing that correctly? I'm not, I'm not, that seems a lot. I, it seems a lot to me to go, my proposal was for 500 total. So if someone did April, May, June, July, August, September, that's roughly a hundred dollars a month. So it's that's 250 times month. what sit to 250 times six. Yeah, 250 times six, 1500. So 1500, um, that just seems like that per, just personally seems like a lot when we didn't charge anything the last two years. I don't. Right. Well, we didn't, we didn't charge anything because it was an assist for businesses to help them through a COVID period. Now, if this becomes part of uh, the town and the, and the, you know, the, the aesthetics of the town with outdoor dining, which I think is beautiful, yeah. you know, to have that many extra, extra seats out there. The revenue is generated, and quite honestly, I, I don't think 250 is burdensome for a restaurant. I really don't. Um, I mean, consider it an advertising cost. People come by, they see it open, they do it. I, I, I really don't think it's a burdensome um, sum to have for the town. And I, I really, you know, we would we would end up. I, I believe it was ninety thousand dollars in total, if I if the math was correct on all the spots. Mitch, can you twenty oh, twenty thousand? Twenty. I'm sorry, twenty 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 thousand dollars. So total, I mean, total. Course, total, yeah, for what total. we for what the spots are. I, I don't expect to get all of that back, but I think you know we should put a somewhat of a dent in it and not give special favors or considerations. If somebody sees that much of a value in outdoor dining and they want to participate, I think they'll stop up. And two fifty is not that burdensome. So I, I stand by the two fifty. And if you guys don't agree, then we're aboard. That's why we had to discuss. It. Uh, uh, I, I I agree that we need we to I think we should gradually do it though uh, in, into uh, the, you know the, the first year was uh, the last couple of years and and the, and then uh, five hundred dollars uh, I think would be a good uh, start and then uh, every board every year at this time every year the board of selectmen can choose to increase it or decrease it but I, I think going um, you know uh, two fifty a month uh, might be a little steep. Um, your comment. Um, I think you do have to look at the revenue of the restaurants. I think you you can't compare um, Hula Moon to uh, Leaf and um, Feather and Wedge. Um, and uh, two fifty a month is going to be minimal to Feather and Wedge, and to Hula Moon, it's going to be much more substantial. So I I think you have to give some consideration to the total revenue of these restaurants. Um, so um, I don't know how we do that. I don't know that you can do that based on food tax, which I think you probably could if it comes in on a monthly basis. I just don't know anything about that. But um, if it were tied to food tax um, revenue, or then you might have a better handle on the equity of it all, however you assigned it. Yeah, that's well, a great mean, point, Herm. Like two little birds has just, I think two little tables in the, you know, right in the dirt in Millbrook Park. So that's significantly different than what Hula Moon has and significantly different than Feather and Wedge. Yes. yes. So I'm, exactly. I'm happy to work if we, I'm happy to work on the fee part more, Mitch, if you, okay. um, do we have another April meeting? So yes, we have a meeting, so 29. If, uh, April 12th, I believe, is your next oh. meeting. So if you want, I'm happy to work. Um, EDC had said that the communities around us weren't charging anything. Um, I can I can extend further and look and see. Sure. But, um, I know in Boston, it's um, what, what the way I understood, I tried to make my way through their regs today. They're charging around, I think it was 450 a month. Um, and then in the north end, the additional 7,500, which is now, it looks like they're negotiating some kind of deal because the restaurants are said they were going to sue over that. Um, so I'm happy to, to work on the fee structure a little bit more if we want, if we want to, we could approve the rest of it and hold off on the fees just so we could let 
give the, give the restaurants, you know, a, a heads up that it's, you know, that we're working on the fees, but that it's been approved so they can start to plan if that's helpful. Mitch, do you think? Should we? Um, I'm, I'm thinking potentially we table this until the next meeting, until we have a solid plan together and we have it. I mean, I, I, I don't like approving things or, or putting things on in piecemeal fashion. It well, makes things may confusing I, a bit. Uh, yeah, Mr. Paul, Chairman, right? may I suggest that we approve it uh, subject to next meeting uh, with the fees because uh, these people need to get things going. Uh, we're already at the end of March. You know, um, I would I, that would be my suggestion. Well, I mean, it, it looks like the, the will of the board is to approve this. The only sticking point is how much to charge for this. Yeah, the, well, so, then we can do that down I the mean, road. Well, what I'm saying is these restaurants can plan on having it. It's going, it'll, it'll get approved. It's just going to be a matter of, you know, what the cost will be to do that. So, but do, um, do they want to, do they, they want to, my, my point is that do they want to uh, start uh, changing things around and getting uh, building stuff um, without a, a, an official approval? Well, we're only two weeks away. So it's not like we're, you know, we're months away. We're only two weeks till our next meeting. So I, you know, I, I'll do whatever I mean, you guys want. I think, I'll, I'll wait. Wait. I think it's fine to wait one more meeting and we can, if anyone inquires, we can just like send an email that we discussed it, that it, you know, all indications are that it's going to be approved. We're just working out a few of the details. I, I think, I that's, think that's perfectly Mitch reasonable. Had, yep. Mitch had one other suggestion that um, is to, I forgot, is to make uh, people let the town administrator know, not the board, so that he can make approvals outside uh, for the the seven days period outside of our meetings so that you know we don't have to approve someone being closed so that he could do that okay. which is totally fine obviously yeah that's fine that's fine so i'm happy to, right. i can i'll do a little more work and we'll just put this on the next agenda it's I'll, a matter, I'll, just a matter I'll, of I'll craft a motion too for that perfect okay. all right we appreciate everybody your okay effort. yeah exactly everybody okay with that paul herm you guys yep, good with that's that fine. Yep, that's yep. fine yeah. Okay. All right. Good. So we'll table this one until the next one. But again, Sarah, thank you. It's uh, we're on the right track here. We just have a couple of little things to work out, but um, it's a great thing. And I, I look forward to seeing this stuff going on year after year. Um, okay. So with that tabled, we will move on to item number five, consideration of window over pop-up performances at Millbrook Meadow on August 18th, 2022. Mr. Chairman, uh, application was forwarded, uh, approved from the Millbrook Meadow committee. Uh, this one and the next one are larger uh, events that I felt um, I wanted to uh, bring the board uh, forward with, uh, bring forward to the board, excuse me. Um, so you have uh, the packet, the materials in your packet uh, for these approvals. And uh, I would recommend that you do approve them. And if there are specific questions, I see that um, Shannon from Millbrook Meadow is here, but they have forwarded with their approved recommendation. And I am also um, recommending that approval. Okay, so this, obviously this goes through Millbrook first, and then the last stop is the Board of Selectmen. So these things have to be approved by the board, correct, Mitch? Uh, no, not not every item. I, I I typically do handle the approvals after Millbrook. I review them, and if I think that there's something that needs to come forward, larger events, uh, I forward those to the board, and that's the case here. Perfect. Okay, great. Uh, Monty, can we unmute Shannon, and we'll get her a take on this, please? Hi, Shannon. You've been unmuted. Shannon. Hi there. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so I think this is a really um, interesting uh, proposal from Windhover uh, for an af two, um, two presentations of pop-up dance events that um, while they are using the pop-up nature, it will be advertised and kind of scheduled, um, but run uh, can four different places or so in the meadow um, consecutively at the same time, and then done again at a, a second time in the meadow. Shannon, if, if you can, just for the people who aren't familiar with the term pop-up, can you please just let everybody know? I know that I know what it is and others do, but just for those sure. who don't know. Sure, so kind of an impromptu, um, unscheduled uh, happening um, that uh, say, uh, I know, I guess my, what comes to my mind is Rockport Music has done this um, with pop-up events throughout town during the festival of um, musical presentations. So this would be similar, but with dance. So um, Perfect. 
Yep. Um, we did have a couple outstanding um, question. I do see Wanda is here, uh, struck us with Windhover um, about music accompaniment. And they were trying to decide at the time of our um, discussion of whether they were going to use live music or, um, uh, you know, some sort of um, amplified music. And then also, um, Wanda, what was the other, your other question about the timing, uh, exact time of the of the two performances? Yes, yes. And, and we've um, thank you, everyone. Good evening. Uh, I'm Wanda Strukas with Windover, and uh, we talked with the choreographer, and we've settled on three and six p.m. so that we can kind of catch the the summer visitors, but we can also uh, make it available for local residents who are after work. So those two, two times should hopefully touch, you know, make it available to everybody. And uh, the question, I guess, uh, about music, did you all decide about you know, we would love to have uh, to have live accompaniment. We don't, we haven't settled on. We don't have a, a musician yet. We've started to talk with some some local musicians who would provide some accompaniment, um, but we don't have that firmed up. So we would like permission to do that. But if that's going to be an obstacle, we can also um, walk it back and just do recorded music. Uh, amplified with with probably with Bluetooth speakers because the pieces move around, we would have um, you know a speaker that travels with them. Okay, well, thank you, Wanda. We appreciate that. And Shannon, uh, any questions from the board on this? Seems nope. really what a cool idea. Love this. Love anything that gets us back to people getting together and being outdoors and enjoying what, all the great work that Shannon and all the Millbrook Meadow Committee has done down there. So it's a great thing. Now we start all that work. You know, I know there's still some other things going on, but now that most of the, the lion's share is done, uh, being able to enjoy a place like that is just, it's tremendous. So thank you, Shannon. You're welcome. Thank uh, you. Okay. Yeah, you're very welcome. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none. Roll call vote. Uh, I don't see Ross. Is Ross on here? Ross, yep. did you yell out? Are you here? Okay, good. Yep. I didn't see you on my. Oh, there you are. I got you now. Okay. Uh, roll call vote. Selectman Brackett. Aye. Uh, Selectwoman Wilkinson. Aye. Selectman Murphy. Aye. Selectman Lilia. Aye. Selectman Campbell votes aye. Motion carries 5-0. Is there a motion for item six? Consideration of Rockwood Acoustic Mu Acoustic Music Festival on August 14, 2022. Yes, there is, Mr. Chair. I move that Thank the selectmen approve the use of Millbrook Meadow for the Rockwood Acoustic Music Festival on August 14th, 2022. Second. second. Motion's made and seconded. Shannon, are you going to speak to this one too, or is it going to be uh, Jake Pardee? Who, who's here to speak on this? Would it be you? Monty, can you unmute Shannon, please? Hi go. there. Thanks again, uh, Mr. Chairman. And um, I do see that uh, Jake Party is, was here, um, but I'm not seeing. Oh, there he is. I'm here. <laughs> there you go. He's All here. Right. So if you guys have any additional questions, my understanding from Jake and the application is that it's the format is um, similar from the last, what now, 42 years, right, Jake? <laughs> um, so this will be the 43rd uh, um, edition of the Acoustic Music Festival, um, starting at noon, running through 6 p.m., um, set up before and after, anticipated breakdown by 8 p.m. in the evening. Um, I think the only question is, I don't know, Jake, about any kind of uh, food offerings or things like that, but that would add additional layer, but the application as submitted did not include that. So um, uh, to answer your question, um, if I may, we are just going to continue it the way that we've done it. We have the intention of potentially pursuing the one day liquor license in the future someday about maybe expanding it to have vendors. But if we have food at all, it'll be perhaps like it's been before a single hamburgers and hot dogs type of option, but most likely it will be just the merchandise for sale like we've done before to raise money for the festival and it'll be 
uh, as it's been just setting up in 12 to six and packing up and going home. Great. Awesome. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, Jay, got, listen, I'm going to ask, dress the way you are and seeing a palm tree behind you. Where are you right now? Uh, I'm sorry to say we're in Naples, Florida. <laughs> no, nah, don't be sorry to say it. That's a good thing. It's cold up here. Uh, yeah. so bring some sunshine back. That's a it's great fair. thing. Well, enjoy yourself down there. And thank you. And, you know, it's, from my standpoint, it's great because, you know, I abut uh, kind of a button Millbrook. I'm up the street a little bit on King Street Court. But, you know, walking down and seeing things and then just even being out on my deck and hearing it from a distance. I, I love it. I think it's phenomenal. So that's a great thing. Thank you very um, much. Okay. You're very welcome. Thank you for, for putting this together. Uh, questions from the board? No, sounds yeah. awesome, as always. Good. All right. Uh, no further discussion. And we will go to a roll call vote. Selectman Brackett? Aye. Uh, Selectwoman Wilkinson? Aye. Selectman Murphy? Aye. Selectman Lilia? Aye. Selectman Campbell votes aye. Motion carries 5-0. All the best for a great event. Events, because we just did two of them. So that's great. Thank Thanks, you. Nice to see you. All right. Uh, we are going to skip item number seven, approval of ARPA local fiscal recovery funds, because we don't have any requests in right now. Is that just to verify, Mitch? Is that correct? That's correct. I do not have anything for you to consider this evening. Excellent. Okay. So, so moving right along. Geez, tonight's a quick meeting. Um, let's go on to item F, the Board of Selectmen and Town Administrator updates. Let's go to the budget, um, fiscal okay. 23 budget. Mitch, go ahead. So, Mr. Chair, I have um, part of general updates. I have uh, the uh, FY22 transfers for you to consider for a recommendation, as well as uh, prior year bills for town meetings. So, um, can you see the uh, chart that's up on the screen? Now we can, yes. Okay, great. So these are the items that, uh, as of this afternoon, uh, moving forward, uh, we're seeking a recommendation uh, for uh, uh, current year budget transfers, $50,000 from free cash to uh, snow and ice to address this, a, a portion of the snow and ice deficit. So this has already been previously approved by you and Finance Committee when you approved the free cash, cash usage. Uh, this is just the actual mechanism to get it from where it exists into the correct line item. Uh, $1,650 from uh, HR operating expense to fire department training. Uh, this covers a portion of the cost associated with CPR classes for uh, members of the fire and forest fire departments. Uh, $8,000 from the Essex Tech assessment and surplus funding in that account based on the actual assessment that came through uh, to town clerk communication equipment rental. Uh, this covers the cost of having the vendor for uh, both of the town meetings. Uh, April and the additional meeting in May uh, for audio uh, and uh, the video recording and the audio recording, as well as the microphone system that is set up. 22500 from the health insurance line to DPW transfer station, other purchased services. This basically fronts the cost of the household hazardous waste event. So we have not had one in over a decade. There will be one in June. Uh, we will be charging uh, for individuals who do come through for that and for what they drop off. So we expect that it will be a wash to the town. However, that funding, as you're aware, doesn't just come in and sit in an account. It goes into the general fund. So this is basically uh, fronting those costs so we can pay the actual bill when it comes due. And uh, $20,000 from health insurance to public works uh, supplies. So this is for, uh, we had to put in an, an additional uh, bag order for the pay-as-you-throw bags. And same thing, as you're well aware, these are, uh, there's a charge for all of these. We just need to be able to pay the bill in a timely manner. Normally, DPW would be able to do some internal shuffling uh, for something like this, but the um, increases in uh, heating oil and the increases in vehicle fuel uh, have uh, caused a significant issue and, and wreaked a lot of havoc with DPW's budgets. Um, so their ability to make uh, internal adjustments is limited because most of their funding at this point is going to pay for heating oil and vehicle uh, uh, fuel. So uh, we need to seek it from uh, these accounts. So i um, happy to answer any questions and I'm seeking a, a positive recommendation from you for a town meeting for this item. And one additional item I should add for snow and ice, the total snow and ice deficit is $168,000. We will be working to address the remainder of that deficit through the year-end transfer process in May and June 
uh, once we get a better handle on where things land with certain lines. Do you need a vote on the uh, recommendation on these, Mitch? Please. Okay, just wanted to make sure. Uh, questions from the board? Perm, Sarah, Paul, Ross? No, nope. all no. good. No. Everybody's okay? This is pretty straightforward. They were explained in detail. Um, nobody has any questions? Okay, uh, does somebody want to make a motion to support? I'll make a motion. Please. I move that the town appropriate and transfer FY22 receipts from the following accounts to be expended by the following town departments to balance the FY budget, uh, 22 budget. That is from free cash to snow and ice labor, from HR operating expenses to fire training, Essex tech assessments to the town clerk communication equipment rental, from help. Yeah, Herm, just mention the amounts in these, if you will, please. Okay. Just so we I, have it for the record. Back I'm to sorry. the beginning. So transferring 50,000 from free cash to snow and ice um, and snow and ice labor, 1650 from HR operating expense to fire training, 8,000 from Essex tech assessment to town court communication equipment rental, 22,500 from health insurance to DPW transfer station, other purchased services and 20,000 from health insurance to DPW public works supplies. Okay, second. is there a second? Good, motion's made and seconded. Further discussion? Mitch, you can take that screen share down now if you want. Uh, I have uh, one um, other here. item after this, Mr. Chair. Oh, okay, yep, very good, okay. Uh, hearing none, roll call vote, Selectman Brackett. Aye. Selectman Wilkinson? Aye. Selectman Murphy? Aye. Selectman Lilia? Aye. Selectman Campbell votes aye. Motion carries 5-0. Uh, Great, thanks, Mitch. Go ahead, moving on, get your next one. Okay, Mr. Chair, uh, prior year bills. We have one prior year bill uh, from the planning board for $73.89. It's a bill from last fiscal year for Staples for printer toner. Uh, as you're aware, we need a nine tenths vote to get this through town meeting because it is a prior year bill. And obviously we use the toner, we have to pay the bill. So um, seeking your positive recommendation on this. 73.89, not sure if we can afford it, but let's give it a shot here. Um, and do we have, did you want a motion on this as well? I don't see a motion Please. on this. Nope, we just need a motion okay. that uh, says uh, uh, that, that uh, uh, the board recommends approval of article two. Okay, somebody want to make that motion? Sure, I move that the board recommend approval of article two. I'll second that. Motion is made and seconded. Further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Selectman Brackett? Aye. Selectwoman Wilkinson? Aye. Selectman Murphy? Aye. Selectman Lilia? Aye. Selectman Campbell votes aye. Motion carries 5-0. Excellent. Um, Mitch, you want to keep going with COVID? Sure. Um, that, uh, I don't have much to add on COVID uh, right now, Mr. Chairman. Um, again, we've covered uh, the uh, scaled back precautions that will be in place for town meeting on Saturday. Uh, we, have, we continue to have COVID tests available on a daily basis. In the selectman's office, we do have some folks still coming in daily to get those. We'll be distributing them at the end of the selectman, uh, end of the uh, town meeting on Saturday. Um, there is another vaccine clinic coming up on April 9th. Um, people are able to sign up for that on the town website. And um, Board of Health is meeting tomorrow evening at 5.30. That uh, wraps things up. Uh, town meeting we've already covered with the moderator. And that is all I have for uh, this evening, Mr. Chair. Good. Okay, let's go around the horn here. Um, who has updates that they would like to share with the voters of Rockport? Oh, one sec, I just have to shut my door. Okay, uh, all right, I'll tell you what, I'll kick this off. Um, last Saturday at the DPW barn, we had a, um, the DPW uh, building committee met and we had a Zoom meeting that was conducted to kind of show people the condition of the building, why things are necessary. It was explained, I gotta tell you, Bruce Reed did an absolutely tremendous job in presenting. Uh, it was very clear, concise to the point, um, answered a lot of the questions that were had about why we need the extra money, uh, what steps were done to mitigate the cost of the building, to redesign, to look at all other options, to keep costs down as much as we could. 
Um, so it was it was a great meeting, and if I would encourage people to ask questions of uh, anybody on the board to um, to see if they if they can get them answered for them because it's it really is straightforward. It's just like, unfortunately a victim of the time uh, and timing. Uh, so I, I would urge people who are on this call to talk to your friends and neighbors, support this article. Um, it, it really if if you were there and you were inside and you haven't been, I encourage you to go up and see it. But this is so necessary that I, you know, I, 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 I can't stress that enough. Um, so any, any thoughts from anybody else on this? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I might have missed, uh, how many people did you say attended that? Oh, I want to say there was probably in person, there was probably 30 or so. 30 or so um, okay. it, yeah. Yeah. It was a good turnout. Um, the, the Zoom part of it was, was not as well attended as I would hope that it have been. We did that purposely for people who might have been uncomfortable in a small, in a, in a confined space, didn't want to be there. Um, but it was there and it was available. And we tried, we've tried, on, there's a trifold brochure. Um, there's all kinds of information out there. If anybody wants it, it's very, very easily accessible um, and they can get all their questions answered. So, well, I, 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 I... I, I've uh, supported this project and I will continue uh, to support this project. Um, it, it uh, you know, it's unfortunate uh, that we might be the victim of the times. Uh, had we done this earlier, it would have been a lot cheaper, like that, which off, often happens with municipal projects. You know, it doesn't get through the first time or the, maybe even the second time, but uh, Someone, uh, it, it is, if you haven't been up there, please, I agree with uh, Selectman Campbell, come, go up there and take a look at the, the place. Someone's going to get hurt there. Uh, it, 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 is, it is not fair to have those men and women working in that facility. Uh, it is uh, falling apart and it sorely needs to be replaced. So uh, I'm glad it's going to town meeting. Uh, I hope people will come out and support it, but uh, it's up to the voters of the town of Rockport, and I hope they'll support it. Yeah, exactly. And, and one uh, one more thank you to Mike, um, Mike Richards from uh, Mike Richards from Weston and Sampson, um, who really has has done yeoman's work and jumped through every hoop he can to try to work with us to uh, bring this this project forward. Mike's done a tremendous job. Um, so that's what I have. Is there anybody else that would like to add? Uh, Ross, well, just to capitalize on what Don said, I was I looked at the Zoom and it wasn't well attended. So I immediately called Mike Cronin. He was there today with Monica um Gary and Aaron and hopefully he'll be writing a good article for them hopefully he's coming up tomorrow so we'll see what he writes and and gets that going you know we had we had a photographer come in take some pictures so hopefully it does good fingers crossed on that one thank you for doing well, that well Ross, the information is good. all out there it's, it's a matter of people to you know to to uh read it and and to make a formed decision uh and I hope uh I hope people will uh support this Absolutely. Thanks, Paul. Sarah? Yeah, and I think, um, you know, Monica and Bruce, I saw Bruce last night, like, and obviously your whole team are doing a great job. And on, I mean, everyone I come across who, who educates themselves on the subject is like sold. They're like, I get it. I'm super thankful that the committee's done their work. You know, we're all taxpayers too. And I love that Monica and Bruce, when they speak on the, on the original Zoom, I thought you did a great job and you're totally honest. Like we're all in the same position. No one wants to spend the money. There are things you just have to spend the spend money on. It's, you know, it's the cost of, of infrastructure in cities and towns and it is what it is. Um, so hopefully we have a good turnout and thanks. And great idea to call Mike. Um, Cronin about it because they haven't I don't think they've really been covering it much but Monica your brochure which I got from you at the at the dump looks great too the times had one story about two weeks ago small yeah and I'm glad that um a, a few weeks ago Monica kind of put her foot down on social media and said reach out or come to a meeting for the info but you know she wasn't going to debate on social media because it's like you know, it's just a bottomless pit. And um, I was glad she said that because it's one of those things where like you can debate back and forth all day on Facebook, but when you go to the barn and see the situation, it is what it is. Like there's not, you know, there's not a lot of denying it. So it was built in 1966. Uh, I mean, yep. Yeah. 
Enough said. There's no denying that it, it that it's a lot of money and it's a, it's a ba- it's bad timing, but it, the the time is now and it needs to happen now because if this goes forward any further, costs are they're not coming down. They're only going to escalate. So, um, so that's that. Okay, uh, we beat that horse enough. So, uh, Herm, go ahead, please. One quick comment on your last comment. I I echo exactly what you said, but going further in a different direction. I listened to a meeting today, the MBTA advisory board meeting, 9.30 to 11, um, and the multifamily zoning requirements for MBTA communities was spoken to by Mike Kennelly, Secretary of Housing and Urban Development. I think the points that I carry away are, it will not be something that any community can avoid we are all going to be expected to move up our um, low-income housing. Statewide, it's order in the order of 6%. They want to raise it statewide to 10%, but then there are those communities that um, are going to have to submit to the 15 units per acre and uh, to raise this level. Um, a point that um, I have mentioned before as a possibility to some, and that is that there is the concern about the noise of the trains in or at our MBTA station. Uh, my personal feeling is that the track should end at Pools Lane and not at Railroad Avenue. Um, when a question was asked today concerning the land owned by MBTA, which is considerable in the different communities, was the state considering or asking MBTA to give up some of that land so that that land could be used to accommodate this increased housing? The answer was yes, those discussions are underway. So I say to everyone in Rockport, there's the possibility that we could solve a couple of problems here. One is lessen the noise of the trains by moving them further out um, and end up with a one unit kind of piece of property without a train in the middle of it if in fact we are going to have to have multi-family housing in that locale, which I think we will. So enough said, but anyway, that's what I learned. Yeah, well, thank you, Herm. And, and a while back, uh, I don't know, maybe four months ago or so, uh, Senator Tarr, myself and Mitch um, went, up to, um, went up to Maine to look at one of those, to look at a hush hut. Um, and it was it was quite different than what I thought it was going to be, but it was it was absolutely tremendous. The environmental impact of it is is great because it really mitigates everything with all of the reclamation systems, with all the ventilation systems, um, with the noise dampening being you know the main reason why something like that was put together. But that's that's something that the MBTA would have to undertake. That's not something the town would undertake. So I would hope that potentially, and Senator Tower, I know, is working on that. Um, so I don't know how it's going to play out, but I, I get what you're saying, and I agree with you, especially as an abutter of that property. I'd love to see that happen. So that's that. Okay, any other updates from any of the board members? Sarah? Just one, I forgot. Um, I attended the last school committee meeting, and they discussed the net zero um, resolution that we, and they rescinded their... Um, original motion in, they had made a motion a couple meetings ago to support it with some caveats. They've rescinded that and they created motions that matched what we, what we voted to support. So we're on the same page as the school committee. Excellent. So they would, it was at the 2050 and, and, uh, and, ha- and, and not I'm... taking any of the purview away from the school committee. Yes. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty, I'll okay. double check my notes, but I'm pretty sure it matches exactly now. Good. That's yeah. great. Um, that's great. And thanks to Mike Kelly and the rest of the school committee and, and Superintendent Lebo and his staff for that as well. Okay. Um, anybody else? Last call. Hearing none, we will go to our last public comment session. Um, any questions, comments, concerns, please raise your hand. Use the hand raised function. Uh, let's go back to Toby, if you don't mind, uh, Monty. Thank you, Toby Arsenian, 95 Granite Street. Uh, I object to what Herman Lilia said about the uh, proposed 
uh, rezoning the overlay district at the train station. Uh, what the state is requiring is not affordable housing. It is simply housing. The only requirement for affordable housing incorporated in that is what we have in our local uh, zoning, the section housing balance, uh, which requires a minimal number if you are doing a large development. But overall, that is not affordable housing. And it, the state has not ordered us per se to do it. Uh, if we do not do it, we're not available you know, um, not able to get grants of four different kinds. And uh, earlier I read uh, from the letter that the state sent out to the towns and cities uh, at, with the names of the specific grants. Um, members of your board seemed at that point to be unaware of the specific grants, what they were. Uh, I also brought that forward at a finance committee meeting uh, and remarked that Jason Shaw had said that he had started to look into the grants and given up. Apparently, although a lawyer, he found their uh, verbiage more than he could wade through. And the chore of finding out about what the grants are uh, was cast upon Mitch's shoulders. And at some point before the town meeting, we need to know exactly what the town stands to lose if we don't jump through the hoops that the state is proposing. But they are not ordering this zoning. Uh, it's only that if we do not do it, and the proper word for this is blackmail, if we do not do it, we are not eligible for certain grants. The ten penny question is, are these grants that are important to the town? And we don't know unless we have the specifics. I trust you're going to get them. Thank you. Thank you, Toby. Okay, anybody else for public comment? Hearing none, we are going to go into executive session. Um, is there a motion for, is there a motion to adjourn on this meeting? Do we need, we need a motion to adjourn, correct? You need a motion want to, to enter follow. into executive session, Mr. Chair. Executive session, okay, so go ahead. Help you. Uh, and who has who is the, who drew the one the short straw on that? I rattled it. He almost did the wrong thing. <laughs> okay. I move that the board enter into executive session for uh, I don't know. Following executive sessions, executive session pursuant to general law chapter thirty a section twenty one a three to discuss strategy with respect to litigation if an open meeting may be may have detrimental effect on the litigation bo litigating body. Public body and the chair so declares votes may be taken. Executive session pursuant to general law chapter 30A, section 21A3 to discuss strategies with respect to litigation regarding Back Beach Neighbors Committee, first town of Rockport, United States District Court, CA number 120CV11274, NMG. An open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litig litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares votes may be taken. Executive session pursuant to general law chapter 30A, section 21A3 to discuss strategies with respect to the litigation regarding Back Beach Neighbors Committee versus Town of Rockport Land Court, CA numbers 21 MISC 000174. An open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litiga litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares votes may be taken. Executive session pursuant to general law chapter 30A. Section 21A3 to discuss strategies with respect to litigation regarding Back Beach Neighbors Committee versus Town of Rockport, Essex Superior Court, docket number 2177CV000364. If an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the lit litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares, votes may be taken. Executive session pursuant to general law, chapter 30, what am I? Chapter 30A, section 21A. Subsection three, to discuss strategies with respect to threatening potential litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigating position of the town and the chair so declares, subsection seven, for the purpose of complying with any general or special law, specifically general law chapter 214, section 1B, rights, right of privacy, right to privacy. Executive session pursuant to general law chapter 30A, section 21A3, to discuss strategies with respect to litig litigating Litigation regarding Zeppelin versus Town of Rockport et al. Essex Superior Court, docket number 2177CV01006D. If an open meeting may have detrimental effect on the litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares, votes may be taken. Executive session 
pursuant to general law, chapter 30A, section 21A3, to discuss strategies with strategies respect to lit litigation regarding Gen Glenn McLeod et al. versus Town of Rockport et al. Essex Superior Court, docket number 2177CV00077. If an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares, votes may, may be taken. Executive session pursuant to general law, chapter 30A, section 21A3, to discuss strategies with respect to litigation regarding uh, rail sale at all versus town of Rockport, United States District Court, CA number 122 CV 10331 JGD. If an open meeting may have detrimental effect on the litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares, votes may be taken. Executive session pursuant to general law, chapter 30A, section 21A3, to discuss strategies with respect to litigation regarding James Doyle versus town of Rockport et al., United States Federal Court, number 121, CV 11015 LTS, if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigating position of the public body, and the chair so declares, votes may be taken, uh, the board will not reconvene in, in public session. You've heard the motion, is there a second? Second. 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 Uh, the chair so declares that we are entering into executive session because by not doing so, it would be detrimental to the town's negotiating and litigating position. The board will not reconvene in open session. Uh, roll call vote. Selectman Brackett. Aye. Selectwoman Wilkinson. Aye. Selectman Murphy. Aye. Selectman Lilia. Aye. Selectman Campbell votes aye. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you, everybody who stuck around. We appreciate you being here. Have a wonderful and warm evening. Hopefully, we'll get some, uh, some springtime weather soon. Thank you. At this time, the board, public portion of the Board of Selectmen's meeting has concluded. We ask that you please exit the meeting at this time.